Hello everyone. It's Friday afternoon, February 16th, 2024. And obviously what you're looking at is a bunch of boats here in the marina. This is the Simons Town uh, Marina. And the Yacht Club is the False Bay Yacht Club. Why they're two separate entities is anybody's guess. Anyway, it's a nice little town. You see all the houses up there on the hill. There's some high rent apartment condos over there. Yeah, about two and a half hours from sunset. Right now the weather is beautiful. This morning it was quite cool to for me, actually, cold, uh, wind blowing, in gusts up to 35 knots again, howling through the rigging, uh, pretty heavy cloud cover this morning and sprinklies of rain, big old South African Navy ship over there. That's quite a large facility they have because it's their main uh, naval base, I guess, for the whole country. Another one back over there in the distance. Anyway, when I cut off the other, the last video, uh, getting in here was quite a challenge. When I finally picked up a forecast from Windy, it said light southeast winds five maybe ten knots I thought oh, that's gonna make it nice getting up in here well that didn't last in no time at all the wind shifted around to the northwest almost on the nose and got up to 20 knots so the last 30 miles was a real challenge because with the wind so far forward we couldn't really sail except uh, 30 degrees off the course line, which I did do for a while. But uh, with that strong wind and the chop that was generated by it, made it very difficult to keep the boat going straight forward because if it got off course a little bit, the wind would catch the bow and just push it around either to port or starboard. And uh, it was cold in that wind. Sitting out there, had to hand steer for quite a ways. Finally got into the bay, came up through the bay, same conditions pretty much all the way up inside here. Got around the seawall for the Navy base and over in that area there, although you can't see it from here, there was a mooring buoy that we happened to see. It was 11 o'clock at night, pitch black, no moon. And uh, we finally picked up this mooring buoy that said, for emergency use only. And I said, well, we're both dead tired, cold, cold, cold. It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm not even going to begin to try and get in the marina under these uh, wind conditions. Plus, there's, uh, you see that black stuff floating in the water there? That's like a wave break. And uh, I couldn't remember exactly how I got in here before because it was 15 years ago so we picked up the emergency only bore, uh, boring ball and both happily went to sleep got up in the morning still blowing 25 30 knots from the northwest so we just waited it out through the rest of the day about this time a little bit later in the afternoon conditions settled down a bit and we had already contacted the marina manager they said they had a slip for us and all we had to do was get in here so we dropped the mooring and got the motor going and put, put it over here and got in okay and tied up and breathed a huge sigh of relief I'm going to continue this video in the cockpit uh, because it's been pretty much work, 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 work on the boat and uh, a couple of runs off to the grocery store.
but uh, things are have progressed quite nicely. Anyway, continuation next. Okay, folks, here we are sitting in the cockpit. Bright sunlight in the background. Sorry about that. Kind of hard to avoid because the sun is over there. Anyway, uh, some of the persistent problems that I've been chasing forever, it seems. Uh, one was the compass and uh, weird anomalous readings that I was getting. Finally figured out no problem with the compass. The problem was the fluid level. Because uh, after 40 something years, the fluid level in the compass bowl was down a lot lower than it's supposed to be. And that was causing drag on the compass card so it couldn't respond properly. Anyway, good old YouTube did a video search on how to refill the compass. It was super easy, only took a few minutes. The main trick was getting the proper fluid, which turned out to be, uh, it's supposed to be mineral oil in American ease. Uh, basically Johnson's baby oil. So I took myself across the street because to put it in you really need a syringe. Not the kind of needle you use for like an insulin injection. They're a little bit bigger. But anyway, the little nipple on the end fit right in the fill hole in the compass. And uh, it took 350 milliliters of oil to uh, fill it almost completely all the way. And I got a little air bubble at the top, but I'm not too concerned about that. You can fill them all the way, but it's, it's very tedious to get that last little bit of air out of the thing. And lo and behold, compass works perfectly well now. So that was one thing that's been uh, pestering me, driving me crazy since way back, uh, I think, since the first trip coming out of Thailand where I thought I was getting these really weird readings on the compass. Certainly after we left Cochin and even before that when we left Sri Lanka trying to get down to the Seychelles get these really wildly inaccurate readings on the compass. Hopefully that's all cured now. One of the other big <laughs> ongoing problems and this was due to Fred was the situation with the raw water pump. Now I've rebuilt it a couple times. It's pretty easy. It's just a couple of seals and a couple of bearings. You get basically any bearing shop carries their off-the-shelf bearings. The seals are off-the-shelf. I replaced. There's a circlip that goes in there. I replaced that and a little o-ring. I also replaced that. But the mistake I made was the shaft floats, well the bearings are attached quite snugly to the shaft, but the housing where the bearings ride in, uh, that whole, the shaft with the bearings attached to it can move in that housing, uh, not in a circular fashion, but fore and aft, shall we say. And when I popped the thing back together again, uh, I had the shaft in too far. And because the cover, the old cover, had an indentation in it, I thought it was all made that way. Well, I get here and they got a really great mechanic up there in the marina. And I showed him the whole thing, and he looked at it, and he says, Well, you see that there shaft? How far it's sticking out above the surface of the pump where the cover goes? He says, That's not right. And he tried pushing it back in by hand, but it wouldn't budge. He absolutely assured me in his many years of rebuilding hundreds, perhaps thousands of raw water pumps, that that just wasn't correct. So I carried myself back down here to the boat, disassembled the water pump, checked the bearings and the seals, and put it back together with uh, that bronze plate that I got in Sri Lanka. 
and uh, all I had to do was take the shaft, give it a couple light taps with my bronze mallet to uh, so it didn't stick out as far. It was fine. It still turned quite freely. It wasn't binding anywhere. And uh, uh, fortunately, the guy in that shop there had a couple of the paper gaskets, and he just gave me a couple of them. I put it back together. I drilled and tapped the holes out because it was like old 832 screws, number 832 USA measurement type screws. Anyway, I drilled them out a little bit and tapped it out to 5 millimeter because I could get 5 millimeter stainless steel little hex bolts here. And uh, assembling the cover plate with the little hex bolts using a little uh, socket and a ratchet, quarter inch drive ratchet, much easier than getting in there with a Phillips screwdriver. So I put it all back together again and uh, started the motor, ran fine. And it was having a little bit of a problem, it seemed like, with the engine running too hot. And I'm thinking, well, maybe the heat exchanger core is clogged up or something. Well, that's not the problem. The problem was a couple of different things. Number one, an insufficient amount of water was being pumped through raw water because it was leaking by the old cover plate. With the new cover plate, it works fabulously well. And it doesn't break the siphon because it's, that cover plate seals the impeller against the pump body and itself. So that resolved an issue that I've had now for months, caused me many, many hours of discomfort lying down there because the only access I have is through a little hatch in the starboard side of the engine room to reach the water pump got that all strained out, was able to reinstall the raw water strainer so the top is above the water line. That's the way it's supposed to be, so you can take the lid off and check the strainer without flooding the boat. Before, I had to drop the strainer, so I was hanging it off a piece of line so that it stayed below the water line. Well, that's a little dangerous if the thing springs a leak that flood the boat. Uh, so now, the raw water strainer is back where it belongs. The pump is working perfectly, and it's moving a very large volume of water through uh, the engine. I also checked the belt tension on the freshwater pump. That was a bit loose. So I tightened that up, put everything back together again, ran the motor, and lo and behold, there it was running at a nice about I don't know, 175 degrees Fahrenheit instead of up around 195 or 200, which is still tolerable but not good, especially under load. So, got that situation resolved, which is a big load off my mind considering we're facing a 6,000 mile ocean crossing, more or less, coming up. So two big things, the compass and the raw water pump. Now I got these new rigging wires and have had problem. One broke twice, one broke once. And uh, unfortunately here in South Africa, the cones that go inside the fittings, their Norseman fittings, are unavailable. Norseman, it turns out, went out of business or closed up shop some years ago. Although Navtech took the company over and still produces the fittings, and there's an American company that still produces the cones for a somewhat reasonable price. Ha ha, a little piece of stainless steel. But getting that stuff here uh, with the time to freight it and the costs, uh, it's just insane. And the South African Postal Service, I've been informed, has basically gone down the toilet. So that didn't look like a viable option. Anyway, the Marine, uh, the guy up here, Tony, that has a little chandlery, he had some of the stay lock fittings. Now, I do have a couple stay lock fittings on the rigging, on the big wires, the head stay and the back stay. And uh, that's kind of a mix and match thing. I'm not sure why I got different sizes. It might have been availability in the way back when I was re rigging the boat. But, uh, the cones for the stay locks 
and the cones for the Norsemen are not supposed to be interchangeable. I cheated because I could get a couple of the Norse, uh, the Staylock cones. We'll see how it works out. Hopefully it'll be okay. Uh, I mean, the man, we did uh, break both port lower shrouds at one time and didn't lose the mast. So fortunately these shrouds only broke one at a time. I fixed the port forward lower and I just got done uh, using the Staylock cone in the Norseman fitting on the starboard aft lower. We'll see how that holds up. The primary problem was I believe that I had quarter inch wire and since the guy got the new wire from said, well, I can't get the cones anywhere. Was reusing the cones. He said, well, everybody says if they're still in good shape, you can reuse them. I thought, that's not true. Because when you tighten the thing, the cones squeeze down on the center strand. So, you know, it's uh, six wires around one. And that's the inner core. And if it's already been tightened down once, it's already squeezed down that cone. Well, the difference between six millimeter and a quarter of an inch is a pretty minuscule difference, but it's enough. So I determined, whether I'm correct or not, I don't know, that the problem is when I tighten the rig up, all the load was on the outer strands and the cone was not adequately gripping the center bundle of wires and that's why the outer wires broke the inner wires didn't break at all uh, the inner outer wires I think on the port forward lower all broke and it just pulled the center right out of the cone the center wires so you know after contemplating my navel quite a bit and playing around with things, that's what I figured out was the problem. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll find out, obviously. So I think I've got that situation resolved. Everything else seems to be doing pretty well. I mean, I had a whole list of other little things. A couple of the interior lights, the switches didn't work anymore. So I went and got a couple of regular toggle switches and mounted them in the overhead panels for those lights, one in the galley, one up forward. That's fixed that little problem. Except, of course, you know, these jobs that you think, oh, that's going to take 20 minutes, you know, wind up taking three and a half, four hours. So, and uh, with it being pretty cool here often, i got to say I'm not actually I'm not operating at 100% efficiency I'm trying to stay warm half the time it seems like and I've been sleeping a lot it's like uh, my body is going into hibernation mode with this cold weather so that won't last too much longer we'll be out of here sometime next week I believe uh, I'm thinking uh, they got these uh, you know like an uber they call it bolt and the guys are real happy to take me from here in Simontown. There's like a park area with a big uh, parking lot. From there, up the road, uh, three and a half kilometers to the grocery store, there's a mall up there, which they didn't have when I was here before, so that's really great. But the problem is, I've been up there a couple times. You come out, you know, usually around noon or so, and these damn drivers will not deadhead to the grocery, to the mall pick me up and then bring me back for the rate that they get for a one-way trip and of course can't negotiate with them directly because they won't even uh, connect to the application it just says busy so bold if you're listening out there you've got to do something to improve that service because it really stinks getting stuck there sitting in the mall for two and a half hours waiting for somebody that's coming down from the north just happens to pick up the message on the software and decides uh, he can pop in there and grab me on his way down to Simonstown. I had one guy actually came in there and said he was going to Simonstown. He was coming south from up north and he refused to take me because he said it wasn't paying him enough money. I said, well, how much do you want? He just drove away. Great. Thanks a lot. 
Anyway, I'm contemplating the possibility now because we've got to do the big grocery store run and the diesel fuel run and some other running around stuff. Uh, might rent a car if it's not too outrageously expensive. We'll see. Anyway, this video is getting a bit long, so I think it's time to shut it down. Bye for now. We will update on uh, departure date. Uh, I'll let people know when we're getting ready to leave. And then, of course, we'll start the whole series of uh, videos again of going up through the Atlantic Ocean. Bye for now.